had headaches or neck pain, might be very mild, or it might be driving you crazy, please check the box. Hot flashes. Could be mild, it might be occurring several times throughout the day. Please check the box. There's another box for night sweats on there. That's related as well. Hot flashes, night sweats are just hot flashes at night. Perhaps you have fatigue. You wake in the morning feeling tired, had a restful sleep, or perhaps in the middle of the day you want to take a little nap. A long nap. Where you don't feel like you can get through the whole day with the energy that you need. Perhaps you have mood swings. Please check the box if you have any trouble sleeping, regular bleeding. So go ahead and finish checking off the boxes that are relevant. And then please check off which of the above bothers you the most. Some people do put in two or three items there. And how long have you been bothered by this condition? Please fill that in. It might be weeks, it might be months. Please describe how it feels or affects you when it is at its worst. So at this point, I'd like um, everyone who's checked out two or more boxes, please raise your hands. Please raise your hands up high. All right, you can look around. Keep your hands up. Sure. All right, everyone has a hand. So, these particular symptoms, even though everyone here has them, it doesn't mean that they're normal. It's certainly common. But symptoms are warning by your body that something is not right, and that something is um, dysfunctioning, and you need to address that. Depending on the symptoms, it could be that your body is degenerating and falling apart, too. So based on these conditions, the one that is worst, does it cause you to be moody or irritable? Does it interrupt your sleep, restrict your daily activities, make you feel stiff or less flexible? Perhaps it also affects your work. Does it affect your decision making? Does it affect your planning? Poor attitude, decreased productivity, you feel exhausted at the end of the day, or unable to work long hours. And it may affect other parts of your life. Does it cause you to lose patience with your spouse or children? Does it restrict your household duties or other areas? So please check those boxes off. So obviously the symptoms you have, whether they're labeled as PMS, osteoporosis, menopause, perimenopause, etc., have a particular cause. And the true cause of the symptoms then tells us the most effective treatment. It could be a combination of several kinds. It could be low blood sugar, weak adrenal glands, malfunctioning organ system, improper diet, stress, and finally a deficiency of estrogen, progesterone, or both. So let's look at the estrogen progesterone balance. Since most medical doctors consider this to be the primary cause or the only cause of these health problems, um, most physicians do not look at stress and the adrenal glands as part of this whole process. And physicians may also recommend the visual cancer causing HRT therapies. According to the study, 46,000 postmenopausal women taking estrogen progesterone treatment nearly doubles the risk for breast cancer as opposed to taking estrogen alone. Mm -hmm. Results show for every year after women to use estrogen only therapy or risk of breast cancer as one percent. 
Each year, a woman needs to put just an estrogen combination or a per risk of about 6 to 8%. So that's eight times more. Um, in Provera, a very synth uh, it's a synthetic hormone that's used in it, and most of these are synthetic. Problem with Provera and other chemically altered forms of progesterone is that they do not perform as healthily as the natural human hormone, and they turn up the most side effects. Since one can easily check for the balance of the entire organ system through pulse diagnosis, which we use in active one must be first certain there's something wrong before any treatment is started. If excess estrogen is unopposed or unbalanced by progesterone, this is called estrogen dominance. Okay, so here, here's a chart that you have in your lecture notes. When we look to see what's going on as far as women's hormones, there are a variety of complex factors that are important to look at. And I have those listed along the side here. I'm not going to go into all details, but the pituitary gland is involved. Ovaries are involved, follicles, estrogens. Now I mentioned the three primary estrogens, estrone, estradiol, and estriol. I should put E3 next to estriol up there. Um, the source of these are the ovary, the adrenals, and fat. And so when the um, <coughs> When the menses cease, when, we are no, when there are no longer any more follicles that respond to FSH stimulation, then the follicles and the ovaries are no longer a primary source of estrogen. However, the adrenals and fat tissue is a source of estrogen, which is why tamoxifen and other types of um, um, estrogen or fat, because the fat produces estrogens, the aromatase inhibitors stop the, the conversion of things in the fat to estrogens by blocking the aromatase, which is which is a enzyme that converts and produces estrogen in the body. Anyone going on who's used tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors? It's a, it's a uh, cancer therapy, anti-cancer therapy. This is just an example of how estrogens are produced in the fat. Now, uh, progesterone is important. The estria, estradiol and progesterone cycles and ratios are important. Ovulation and cycle timing. A lot of these are more related to infertility. When I'm seeing someone because they aren't um, able to conceive, there are a lot more little sub factors that we have to look at in order to determine where an imbalance may be going on. And then, of course, down at the very bottom, <coughs> finite numbers of uh, follicles. So women are born with X number of follicles and when the follicles no longer are stimulated by follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary, then ovulation ceases. So again, these are some fancy charts here. The top one is pituitary cycle. Pituitary is the gland in the brain, it's the master gland. It produces follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone. Here we have estriol. I mean, estradiol, E2, this cycle. We have progesterone in this cycle. And this is showing the endometrial lining of the uterus and how it, it swells based on the hormones in there. And it sloughs off at the end of the cycle if implantation is not According to Dr. John Lee, the symptoms of estrogen dominance are virtually identical to those of PMS and menopause, as well as a causative factor in fibrocystic breast disease, endometriosis, and polycystic ovary syndrome. 